Thank you. Now, our next item of business is topical questions. Our first question from Jamie Green. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish <laughs> Government what action it is taking in response to the recent Mental Health Foundation report, which suggests that one third of adults in Scotland are anxious about their body image. Minister Claire Hawkey. Um, I welcome the recent Mental Health Foundation report and its focus on the importance of a healthy body image. Scotland is at the forefront of tackling this worldwide issue. Body image is increasingly recognised as a factor that can negatively affect people's self-esteem and mental health. And that's particularly but not exclusively the case for young women, as was highlighted by recent re research that we published. We take this report seriously and the acuteness of these issues for young people. And this morning I announced the establishment of an advisory group on healthy body image for young people. Following a six-month review, the group will provide the Scottish Government with specific recommendations for the next steps on how to promote and achieve a healthy body image. Jamie Green. Uh, can I thank the Minister for that very helpful answer and uh, add my thoughts and welcome to this report, the excellent work that the Mental Health Foundation have done. Uh, it, this survey highlighted the profound impact that things like social media and online advertising are having on many young people in Scotland. It also alluded to uh, uh, differences between uh, ethnic minorities and the LGBT community and their perceptions of body image too. It is sad, however, that the survey reported that 38% of adults said they felt depressed about their body image and 32% of young people in Scotland thought that social media was causing them to worry about it. Um, can I welcome the announcement of this advisory group? Uh, specifically on that group, can I ask the Minister to elaborate uh, next? on the makeup of the group in terms of its membership, the strategy and uh, objectives of the group, and if it will extend to at-risk uh, adult groups in terms of its, uh, uh, its focus, and indeed if any funding has been allocated to it. Thank you. Minister. Uh, I thank Jamie Green for that, uh, that uh, question. I think it's particularly fitting on mental health and learning disability week that we're discussing this in, in Parliament. This morning I met with Girl Guide Scotland um, to discuss the impact of body image on their mental health and wellbeing and to seek their views on the advisory group. Um, I'm happy to give uh, Mr Green uh, some more detail that the advisory group will focus on the following tasks developing a charter pledge on healthy body image for young people, developing a Scotland-wide definition of what body image means, developing options for how relevant professionals can support healthy body image, including in schools, and considering the need for wider public consultation on where actions should be taken, and in addition, providing the Scottish Government with specific recommendations and advice on the next steps. Um, the uh, group will uh, make links to the forthcoming advice on healthy social media use um, that we announced a few weeks ago and it will also reflect the issues relating to adolescent females as highlighted in the recent report that I referenced earlier. Um, the uh, group and the makeup of the group we will announce in due course. Jamie Green. Uh, can I again thank the Minister for further uh, clarification as to this uh, advisory group. There were also a number of other recommendations in the report that I think we should at least uh, take seriously and I appreciate some of these matters are uh, reserved matters in terms of uh, regulation uh, of uh, the industry and the internet. However, I would like to get some understanding as to the Scottish Government's position on what, it, what steps it think it can take around the improving the reporting, for example, of online abuse on social media uh, and also recommendations around public awareness of greater diversity uh, of body types uh, and if the government thinks it would have a role to play in uh, really changing pe people's perceptions uh, in Scotland as to the uh, great diversity uh, uh, that really uh, one should never be ashamed of, of one's own body. Minister. I think Mr Green raises some very interesting points there in his question and I think it is incumbent on us all to be challenging some of the perceptions that, that people, particularly young people, but not exclusively young people, certainly not exclusively adolescent girls, um, report in terms of their body image and how that then affects their mental well-being. We, we do recognise the links between unhealthy use of social media and lower men, men, mental well-being uh, in children and young people and that's why we committed to, to publishing advice on healthy social media use and it, uh, I would see that both of these pieces of work would link in together to come back to 
Scottish Government with recommendations. Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much. The Minister will be well aware that people with diabetes uh, face particular mental health challenges arising both from body image and, and physical health. And she'll also know, I'm sure, uh, that there has been a round table in Parliament today uh, highlighting these very issues. Does she agree with Diabetes Scotland that it's important that patients should have access to psychological and emotional support as well as to routine examinations uh, in relation to their physical health? And does she agree that patients themselves should be involved in the design uh, of those forms of support? Minister. Uh, if I could take, take your last point there, uh, Mr MacDonald, about patients being involved, I think we need to have the voices of lived experience at the heart of all that we do. Um, and I think we've demonstrated that through the setting up of the Children and Young People's Task Force, which is co-chaired with young people. Um, and certainly there will be young people involved in developing the social media guidance for young people. So we do need to ensure that that lived experience is, is there. Um, in terms of the, I'm aware of the, the specific um, issue that Mr MacDonald raises, and that's why we've continued to increase our investment into mental health services, uh, an additional £250 million pounds of, of uh, additional investment into mental health services over the next five years to improve services for children, young people and adults across the piece and embed the good mental health rate across all our public services. Question number two, Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to prison officers balloting on industrial action. Minister Ash Denham. The Scottish Government values highly the dedication, the commitment and the professionalism of Scotland's hard-working prison officers and other staff. And it is to the credit of our frontline prison officers that despite pressures, our prisons are generally stable and secure environments. The recognised trade unions have submitted to the Scottish Prison Service their pay proposal for 2019-20 and that is being considered ahead of formal pay negotiations. Um, that process will continue and we would not wish to prejudge the outcome of it. As David Strang, the former HM Chief Inspector of Prisons for Scotland said in the introduction of the 2017-18 annual report, we should never take uh, for granted the good order that is maintained in Scotland's prison, but they are in general stable and secure environments. Liam Kerr. Thank the Minister for that answer. She mentions good order. The Prison Officers Association says that they face rising levels of violence. Now, I've compiled figures from every prison service annual report since the SNP came to power in 2007, and they show that the number of assaults in prison has never been higher, and it's risen 50% on the SNP's watch. Does the Minister think that that is acceptable, and will she apologise to the prison officers for that appalling statistic? Minister. No, it's not acceptable. Um, the SPS has introduced a national strategic risk and threat group to oversee the response to violence against staff. And in addition, local and national violence dashboards have been developed to support early identification of emerging trends. So they can commission the deployment of a range of tactical options, including things like national search operations, in order to support prisons in the recovery of weapons and contraband that can lead to or be used in violence. SPS continue to seek to develop intelligence and evidence around things like substance misuse within our prisons and to understand how this can lead to incidents of violence. And a working group has been established in order to develop operational guidance for all staff to support the management of individuals appearing under the influence of any substance and to mitigate uh, the risk of violence. But as the chairman of the Prison Officer Association in Scotland noted last week, we have not seen the same levels of violence in Scottish prisons as experienced in prisons in England and Wales. Now, we are not complacent about that and we support the ongoing work of the SPS in tackling the violence in our prisons. Ian Kerr. Thank the Minister for that answer. She says she's not complacent, but of course the SNP have entirely ignored ideas from these benches which might stem the violence, such as supplying officers with body-worn cameras. Presiding officer, Prisons have been under the SNP's control for 12 years, and the fact this ballot is going ahead at all is a mark of failure. If a strike goes ahead, it is entirely the fault of the SNP. 
Parliament must be given the opportunity to hear full details of this matter and the failures of the SNP which have led to this point and what the Minister proposes to do about both the potential strike but also the violence on officers. So will she commit today to give a full statement to Parliament? Minister. Thank you. I think the first thing to be absolutely clear about is that the Prison Officers Association have put in a request for um, a negotiation around pay and they have been quite clear that this is not to do with conditions and other factors. It is to do with pay. So that's the first thing to correct in the previous question. We recognise, obviously, um, the difficult, sometimes difficult and dangerous um, circumstances that prison officers work in. And we're very grateful to them for the service that they give um, during their jobs. And we also recognise the importance of providing a safe and a secure environment for those in custody, as well as for the men and women who work in our prisons. The SPS response to increasing levels of violence within our prisons is continually under review and it is taken very seriously and I reassure the Chamber on that point this afternoon. The SPS continues to respond to increasing prison population effectively and it also has robust contingency measures in place to ensure the safety and security of staff and those that are in its care and um, that it, that is maintained. So there are three other members who would like to ask a question. Neil Findlay. Yeah, um, pay, overcrowding, uh, violence are indeed uh, issues affecting prison staff. But I've been speaking to a number of prison officers recently who have raised with me also concerns about the impact of new psychoactive substances within prisons. Uh, can the minister advise what the government is doing to protect prison officers who are being impacted by these substances and the outcome of that is very bad indeed. This is a very real, live, big issue amongst prison staff. And it's wrapped up in all those concerns they have about workload, about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, and their health and safety. It's slightly tangential to the main question, so very briefly, Minister. Uh, Neil Finlay mentioned striking, and I would gently point out to him that prison officers in Scotland do have the right to strike, unlike their counterparts in England and Wales. And that anti-union ban was, of course, imposed in 94 by Michael Howard as Home Secretary and never repealed in 13 years of the last Labour government. So we, the SNP government, recognise the right of prison officers to be treated fairly and as equitably as other unions and other workers in Scotland. And on the issue of drug problems, the SPS is working collaboratively with the Scottish Government and with other partners to respond to the challenges that drugs, and um, specifically new psychoactive substances, pose to Scottish prisons. And the issue of substance misuse in our prisons is taken very seriously, and a range of security measures are in place to prevent the introduction of contraband into our prisons. Mr Friendly. Mr Finlay, either a point of order or a subsequent question if you want to. That's fine. I never mentioned striking once in my question. I know the Minister comes with a pre-prepared answer from the Civil Service, but she's just read out verbatim, which has nothing to do with the question that I asked her. Prison officers are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis trying to address this issue. And one of the big related aspects of it is prison mail, because... The substances are, they're using mail, dipping it in the substance, and that's how it's getting into prison. So what is the minister doing to protect prison officers from these substances? Okay, Mr. Findlay, Mr. Findlay had two opportunities to make the point. It is a very important point. It is slightly tangential to the main question, which is about the strike, and ballot, uh, the strike uh, ballot that is taking place. The minister has given a response. If the, minister, if the member is unhappy with the response, there are many ways he can follow it up, putting down written questions or using other opportunities in the chamber. Rona Mackay, to be followed by Lee MacArthur. Thank you, presiding officer. In 2017, 18 prison inspectors in England and Wales documented some of the most disturbing jail conditions they've ever seen, describing conditions which have no place in an advanced nation in the 21st century. The situation in the rest of the UK is in stark contrast to Scotland. Of course, as the Minister says, this is no reason for complacency. So can I ask the Minister how the Scottish Government is taking forward action to reduce the prison population, including the extending the presumption against short sentences? Minister. Justice officials have established a prison resilience leadership group of senior officials uh, from a range of justice agencies to ensure a cross-agency understanding 
of the challenges of a rising prison population and to seek coordinated uh, approaches in response to that. We continue to strengthen the provision of alternatives to custody, so both to tackle the high remand population and to ensure that community sentences can support rehabilitation and reduce reoffending to help keep crime down and our community safe. An order to extend the current presumption against short sentences from three to 12 months will be scrutinized in Parliament before the summer recess and subject to parliamentary approval, this extended presumption will come into force over the summer period. I can't help feeling that Ms McKay follow the same track as Mr Findlay in asking questions and, and answers that are slightly tangential, but I hope Mr MacArthur will get us back on track on the subject in hand. Mr MacArthur. Given the prison uh, officers' concerns around overcrowding, notwithstanding what the Minister has just said, the prison population stands at over 8,000 now. Two-thirds of uh, prisons are at or beyond capacity. Prisoners are sleeping on mattresses on the floor and doubled up in single cells. If the maximum capacity isn't the real maximum, how many more people does the Minister think can be accommodated before overcrowding becomes an emergency? Minister, briefly as well. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the member is quite right. This is a serious problem, and obviously the Scottish Government is taking it equally seriously. So the Scottish Prison Service continue to respond to the increasing prison population effectively to ensure the security and the safety of Scotland's prisons are maintained. And in response to the increasing prison population, the SPS has developed detailed contingency plans. We have already agreed a range of actions by SPS to help them to manage the population within the operational flexibility within its estate. Officials are continuing to work with the SPS to consider further options to manage the current prison population alongside measures to reduce the churn of people um, that are coming into prison on remand or for short-term sentences. And in line with our programme for government commitment, as mentioned in my previous answer, an order to extend the current presumption against um, those short sentences from three months to 12 months will be introduced into Parliament shortly. Thank you very much. And that concludes topical questions. We're going to move on.